Hey everyone, how is it going? It is lunchtime, and I got to thinking, you know what? I talked about doing a run-through of the book of Revelations. There's a particular blessing I wanted to cover, um, and, and that's what leads, well, just one reason why it leads me to want to do it. I've done chapters 4 and 5, but I I think now's a great opportunity to do a run-through. I'm not going to, I'm going to give a little commentary, not much. I don't know everything about what's going on. But there's some of these things in here I can liken to some stuff that's going on in our world today. And when we read the Bible with a, a simple face value interpretation and apply it to everyday life that we have now, it opens a lot of understanding up. Um, not 100% correct, but it definitely gives us pause to look at the things in the world and go, wow, that really is happening and it's in the Bible. Um, so I just wanted to read through the book of Revelations. Now the blessing I'm talking about is right here in Revelations 1, chapter, or verse 3. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. And that that right there, that, that verse prompted me to go through this book. And this is something that isn't done in churches very much. If they do pass through it, they just pass through it quickly. It doesn't, they don't liken it to anything that we see going on in the world today. A lot of people are afraid to say, you know what, that looks like that could be part of this prophecy. They're afraid to say, you know what, it looks like the Antichrist might be running around the world. For fear of being wrong. Well, I don't care about being wrong. If I, can, I see something that looks like it relates to it, whether I'm right or wrong, I'm going to point it out. Because to me, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about sounding the alarm. I'm a watchman. I'm signing the alarm. Hey, guys, I see something. It looks like it could be this. Pay attention and be aware of these things that are going on. Um, this is how we help each other keep from stumbling and falling by the wayside. So uh, I'm going to do one chapter at a time through and go through the entire book of Revelations. And uh, this will obviously become a video series. Um, and I'll link and I'll like them. Uh, I'll title them accordingly. Uh, so you can go reference them if you want to. A lot of good stuff in here. Now, as we're going along, I'm doing it on my phone on this app so you can read along with me. That way you don't have to have a Bible. You can do this every, anywhere you are. As you're reading along with me, your spirit may speak to you about some of these things. Sometimes hearing it, somebody say it, you get one thing. But as you're reading through it, something completely different comes up. And... Uh, it can be related to something that you've seen. So let's get started. We have the introduction and the benediction. Revelations 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. So the introduction alone has all kinds of connotations to powerful connotations it's the revelation of jesus christ so when jesus arrived in heaven next to the father the father said here here i'm giving you this give this to john so the revelation of jesus christ which god gave him and him is capitalized so it's jesus to show his servants things which must shortly take place and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant john so this gives you an idea of just how important this is he, God is not leaving anything to chance. He is giving each one of us everything we need to be able to make it and to come to faith. There's, like I didn't, like the last video, no excuse. Who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him, 
and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Now I want you guys to pay close attention as we read through this. That verse right there, verse 7, is repeated in the book of Revelations. There is good, I think we're going to stumble across a lot of those little sentences that have those really little powerful details in them as we read through this. Reading it out loud is different than just reading it to yourself. So I'm going to go verse 7 again. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. That's an interesting statement to make. Even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Now, why are all the tribes of the earth mourning? Is it because they know he's coming with wrath? They're going to realize, oh, well, this, it was real. Well, after seven years of going through torture and seeing the book of Revelations come to life, I'm sure they would. But who's not going to mourn? We, we shouldn't be mourning. Well, we might mourn our, our loved ones who may still be here. I don't know. <clears throat> I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. You're going to see this mentioned quite a bit through the book of Revelations. Voice of a trumpet. Saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. Now, something to point out here before I finish this verse. He said to write it in a book. Most of the writings they did back then was on papyrus. And it was on a scroll. It was rolled out. Because they would grind up plant matter to make this papyrus. And they would roll it out flat. And that's what they would write on. And then they would roll it up. And those scrolls would go everywhere. They found, I don't know how many of these things over the time. You know, thousands and thousands. But if he told him to put it in a book. Because that wasn't a book. That was a scroll. And you see references to scrolls and books throughout the Bible. If he told him to write in a book, it's important if it's put into a book because making a book back then was hard. So it's it, that lends credence and importance to the message that's being given. I want you to put this in a book. To Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, Thyatira this, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned... I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like the flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Now, whenever you're reading these kinds of descriptions, Think about what, how this relates to now. What could this possibly match to what we see now? Because most likely, since John is using other things to describe this, he's seeing something he doesn't directly recognize. And so he's likening it to what he knows. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. So were his eyes actually a flame of fire? No. They were probably very intense. They may have even been very light colored. They may have been glowing. We don't know. His feet were like fine brass. It was probably the, the type of boots he was wearing. He was wearing some kind of armor or something. As if He may have been wearing the armor of God. As if refined in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Now, we see throughout the rest of the... You take this stuff and go and, re and relate these things uh, to other scripture to do the rightly dividing thing. You find out that many waters is many languages. So it could be he was speaking in every language known. And when you hear all languages together, say, go out and have somebody record um, a sentence that is uh, read, the same sentence read in 15 different languages, and then listen to them all overlaid on each other, and it sounds like water running. He had in his right hand seven stars, 
Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. He had a lot of energy coming off of him. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. So he says in verse 18, he has the keys of Hades and of death. Elsewhere in the book of Revelations, we see this same reference, but it's relating to a specific time frame. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. So he's telling you exactly what these mean. Now, when we see this reference later in the, in the book, then we know exactly what he's talking about here. So this is part of rightly dividing. We take what we read. I don't quite understand what that is. Let's go do a search through the whole Bible and find out where that reference occurs again. Because everything in the beginning is in the end, and the end is in the beginning. And then we can find out and liken that to something specific and then every time we see that instance after that fact we know exactly what that refers to it also when we go back it helps us understand <coughs> prophecies beforehand um much in the same way of uh, a lot of people are going on about the uh, and i talked about this about the animal sacrifices in the millennial kingdom i still don't think there's animal sacrifice in the millennial kingdom because the scriptures that the people that believe that lead me to there's one verse in there that says it's going to be like this, but not this. And uh, I'll do a separate study on that later. But that tells me that it's, that's not what that is. So you've got to rightly divide. You've got to read. Compare scripture to scripture, precept to precept, to see what things mean. We can go out into the secular world and look at what these things mean all we want to, but that's not going to give us the clearest understanding. When we have it in the Bible, because everywhere in the Bible, so, if there's something there, it's described as to what that is. And we can go find that verse and go, ah, that's what that is. Then jump back forward and go, now we know what this means. Very simple. And God made it that way on purpose. You just have to be willing to see it. So that's chapter one. So where are we at right here? He's about to start the, the letters to the seven churches. And when we read the letters to the seven churches, you're really going to hear a lot of descriptive things. And what this, this is going to do is going to talk to us because we're part of those churches in spirit and it's going to talk to us about the life we're living the things that we're doing it's conviction and in that conviction we can find uh, salvation and we can find repentance and turn away from those things and turn back to our living god our living lord jesus christ who is about to show his face love you guys i bless you on jesus name and i'll see you on the next video